best laid plans of mice and tech bloggers. A little inside baseball. While I was wrapping up our Sony Xperia coverage, we sent this beauty over to Jaime to tackle the full review. Of course, he got the Note 7. And seeing as how we can't pry that phone out of his hands, this poor little bugger slipped through our review schedule. Let's fix that now. Cutting to the chase, this phone rocks. Are you sad that HTC no longer sells the One M8? Want a phone that resembles those sleek lines and features a killer set of front-facing speakers? ZTE has a solution which might interest you. Graceful tapers, familiar antenna bands, high-quality build materials, a premium look and feel. This phone punches well above its $400 price tag. That style is also backed up by killer hardware on board. This 5.5-inch packs a quad HD resolution, besting the OnePlus 3 and Honor 8 for pixel density. We're not lacking for horsepower with a Qualcomm 820 and 4GB of RAM on tap. This phone matches the OnePlus 3 for storage, 64GB built in, but media junkies can also add more via microSD. There's an 8-megapixel selfie shooter above the screen joining a 20-megapixel rear shooter, and the ZTE strays from the mid-price pack with a 3,250 mAh battery and Quick Charge 3.0. Looking at this display, it's a solid screen ready to handle current services and this generation of VR applications. And it delivers great brightness, outpacing the Honor 8 and just nipping at the heels of the Galaxy S7, ultimately losing to the Galaxy once we see that excellent high contrast mode. But for those of you who read on your phones at night, you'll be very happy with how dim the screen can get. I'm also happy to see this placement for the rear-mounted fingerprint sensor. Great location for my little hobbit hands on a 5.5-inch screen size. In operation, however, this has proven to be one of the finickier sensors I've recently used. After training the phone, it's a little less forgiving of finger placement than, say, a Huawei might be. And on an odd angle, it regularly takes a second try to unlock the phone. When you nail that placement, though, this is a lightning-fast performer. There are precious few criticisms we can throw at this hardware, but I do wish we had backlit navigation buttons. The capacitive home, back, and multitasking keys are rather close together, and it takes a while to muscle memorize where you need to press to land the command you want. Thankfully, these keys are swappable, and folks who like a right side back button will enjoy this option. All of this hardware powers a software skin I rather enjoyed. My Favor UI delivers a flat, simple look to an Android layout we'd normally associate with an LG, but with a more cohesive design. The notification shade delivers five quick actions from a single swipe. Your home screens come native in a 5x4 grid, giving you a bit more space to play with widgets. And the app drawer shows off large, bold icons for your installed programs. Lastly, the settings menu is cleanly laid out with simple icons for each option. We're always happy to report that there's little pre-installed bloat outside of a few ZTE-provided services like this nifty toolkit app for your nifty geometry projects. Now, skins are often derided in our comments, but this one I kinda liked. I didn't feel any urgent need to swap it out for Nova Launcher. And performance is about what you would expect from this collection of specs. The Axon handles the daily driver stuff with style and grace. No issues at all with messaging and social media. With a Snapdragon 820 on tap, we shouldn't be surprised that this thing can chew through games like Implosion with a stable and fluid frame rate. It even managed to perform well in Marvel Future Fight. There are still dips in the frame rate, but we don't see it slowed to a slideshow like we witnessed on the Galaxy S7. Alongside the Moto Z, newer phones with this chipset seem to slightly outperform the first devices launched with this Qualcomm hardware. If there's a weak link, it's in radio management. Our review unit performed rather poorly on AT&T's LTE, falling about 2 to 3 decibels behind the OnePlus 3 and 5 to 7 decibels behind the Honor 8 when trying to stay on Big Blue's network. These numbers were even worse on Wi-Fi, where the glass-backed Honor absolutely trounced the Axon when connected to my router. This disparity was so wide, we are asking ZTE to comment on this, and we'll follow up later on Pocketnow.com if and when we receive word on this Wi-Fi deficit. Moving over to the camera, we've already produced the most in-depth look at this camera, which you can see in our full real camera review. But as a quick overview, this is a solid performer which absolutely lives up to this price tag. Photography is all about light, so it's always silly to say you get good photos when you have good light though the Axon delivers pleasant exposures with eye-pleasing saturation when shooting in daylight. This camera does struggle a bit with low-light situations. Optical image stabilization helps, but we did have issues delivering crisp shots here where other phones might have been more successful. Also, this phone very much resembles the fringing and flaring we also see from current LGs. 
Uh, moving to video, we get an extremely ambitious option to deliver H.265 video compression. And this does deliver a very high quality UHD video, but we still had some issues with twitchy stabilization. While this camera might not quite reach the performance of the OnePlus 3 or the consistency of the iPhone SE, we're still very happy with the bang for buck here. This is very good to excellent camera performance for $400, and many of our gripes could be lessened with some software tweaks and future updates. But when we talk about the Axon, audio is the name of the game. Everything about this sound setup is loud and aggressive. These speakers are some of the punchier ones we've tested recently, though they can sometimes veer a bit shrill, especially when listening to jazz and classical music. To my ears, we lose a little in the mids, and the high EQ becomes a bit brittle, but this is a terrific setup for games and films. It's moving over to headphone audio, which totally messed us up. This phone is loud, stonking loud, like off the charts, freaking loud. I recently replaced my audio interface used for testing headphone audio and was in the process of retesting all of the phones we've reviewed so we could have relative numbers between different devices. The Axon 7 blew past the threshold I was using and is forcing me to completely retest everything again for accurate comparisons. This amp beats the V10, HTC 10, and iPhone 6S. And below that tier, it absolutely murders every other phone we've reviewed. Here's a playback comparison at max volume between the Axon, the V10, and the Galaxy S7. Yikes. And while loud, it has a fantastically low noise floor, which means this phone delivers the best signal-to-noise ratio we've ever tested. Few people will be able to tolerate audio at max volume from this device, and we're pretty sure trying for any length of time will damage your hearing. But turning the volume down means benefiting from almost zero discernible noise coming from this phone. No hiss, no whine, no air, no nada. The only compromise here seems to be downsampled playback of high-res audio files, only outputting 16-bit audio. And we also see a little funkiness with our dynamic range test numbers, but it's difficult for us to be overly upset about that. If you listen to high quality MP3s, this phone will do an excellent job driving nice headphones. Lastly, we have a battery with slightly more juice than the competition, which results in very good runtime. On our media test streaming 30 minutes of HD video over Wi-Fi at 190 lux, the Axon drained 5% of its battery, and those numbers match our daily usage. It's really easy making it into the late evening with a little battery to spare. ZTE claims the Axon can recharge 80% in 30 minutes, and we're not exactly sure how they arrived at that number. To be sure, this is a fast charger, and we landed a 61% recharge over a half hour. This is great performance for those times you need to top off during the day. So let's wrap this up. Where does that leave us with the ZTE Axon 7? I'm totally sounding like a broken record here, but 2016 has been an amazing year for mid-ranger phones. ZTE has delivered something really special. This phone is a monster with few faults to find. The main concern and the only potential deal breaker might be the radio performance, which we can't positively conclude isn't an issue unique to our review unit, and we will follow up on any responses we receive from the manufacturer. Otherwise, we're looking at a compelling option for folks shopping a $400 phone. Joining the ranks of Alcatel, OnePlus, and Honor, these manufacturers are hungry for some competition and are rapidly eating away at the line, which divides mid-priced phones from far more expensive flagship options. What a time to be alive. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more reviews like these. Definitely check out our real camera reviews to see these smartphone cameras in action and help us out with some sharing on your favorite social networks. For Pocket Now, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, some gadget guy on Twitter and Instagram, and I will catch you all on the next review.